said the wretch like me gave me the victory. I won't forget. Yeah, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. No, 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 I won't forget. I won't forget it. I won't forget. 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 You saved a wretch like me. Gave me the victory. You saved a wretch like me. Gave me the victory. You saved a wretch like me. Gave me the victory. I won't forget. So God, how we thank you now for another expression of your love, your grace, and your mercy. Oh, certainly, God, we need you every minute, every second, every hour of the day. And God, we've arrived to this preaching moment, and we ask that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to be attentive, receptive, and responsive to your word. Most certainly, God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And so our prayer now, God, is that you would arrest our understanding, our intellect, so much so, God, that we will be succumbed to your Holy Spirit and that to the end, our lives will never be the same again. And so we sign, we seal, we deliver this prayer in the only name that matters, Jesus the Christ. Every heart, every believer said, Amen. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 1, Old Testament book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Grateful to God to see everybody in the building this 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 morning amen there are quite a few who are still out ill i just received a text message uh, from my wife dj woke up about four o'clock this morning sick to his stomach and now he's battling a fever but god is a healer and 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 it's uh particular because my wife is at home recovering from surgery but god Amen. But 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 God. So just in case you all don't think or never, it in, never enters your mind that the pastor has to deal with those type of things. This is one of those seasons. Amen. Where I am soliciting your prayers. Amen. 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 Nehemiah chapter one. Nehemiah chapter one, beginning at verse number five. I'm reading from the English Standard Version this morning. Um, but uh, what, whatever uh, translation you have, it, it will be in context with our discussion this morning. Nehemiah chapter 1, beginning of verse 5. And I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we, y'all see that, have sinned against you. Look at your neighbor and say we. Even I and my father's house have sinned. Lord have mercy. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Verse 8. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you remain to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there, I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive. Y'all see that? Let your ear be attentive to the prayer of of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man 
Now I was cupbearer to the king. For the time that's allowed for us to share, we'd like to uh, talk from this subject from a burdened heart to a bended knee. This is entry two. From a burdened heart to a bended knee. Look at your neighbor on the way down to your seat and say, neighbor, the pastor needs you. He needs your prayers and your amens. This morning sermon topic, from a burdened heart to a bended knee. Prayer, prayer is one of the blessed privileges that God has afforded to all of his children. All right. So much so of a privilege and an honor that it is that prayer is communication between the creation and the creator. That God would think so much of his creation that he would provide an avenue for his creation to talk to the one that created them. That God loves us so much that he created a platform, an opportunity, as much as you would like to, to talk to the one that created you. Right. And for many of us, that may not, that may not, that may not be, be, be too heavy in your mind until you need God to answer your prayer. Until you need God to actually show up in a situation that you yourself have tried to fix, but you've messed it up. Until you yourself has found your back up against the wall, faced with a situation, a struggle, a mishap, or a misfortune that's so much so beyond your control that now you have no other choice but to talk to God. And I pity the individual that gets on their knees and talks to God and in the back of their mind, they don't know if God is going to answer because they have not developed a habit of talking to God when they're on the mountaintop. You ain't got to say, man, I'm on somebody's road right there. And if all of us in here are honest and transparent, you can testify, I included, that there have been some times and some seasons in my life where I have not been consistent in my conversation, in my dialogue, in my talk to God. Do I have any honest folk in here who can testify? A uh, 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 stress, struggle, and strain will cause me to forfeit my talking to God because I'm so much so concerned about what I see versus what God is already saying. And brothers and sisters, if you get so caught up based off of what you see, God cannot tell you or reiterate to you what he's already said in his word. But as a result, it's hard for us to see the forest for the trees because, because all of us go through uh, this, this phenomenon called life. And life carries with it a level of, of, of hardships. A level of, 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 of railroad tracks and speed signs and stop signs and road bumps and stumbling blocks and headaches and sick days and whale days. And God is saying, I'm here and you can talk to me regardless of what day you're experiencing. I knew the day was going to come before you knew what a day really was. Do I have about 20, 25 folk in the building who can slip up their hand and say, I've learned to bless God in due season as well as down season. And so, and so when you develop this habit of praying to God and talking to God, 
through your conversation, through your communion, through your prayers, God is fashioning your heart. God is 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 strengthening your spiritual vigor. He's 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 building and 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 rebuilding your spiritual muscles because you don't know the next struggle that you're gonna have to face. And God is saying, if you can bless me over the little stuff, I can bless you with some big stuff. But understand, it's gonna be a big struggle. And I wish I had somebody in the building who can testify. You don't mind the big struggle because you serve a big God. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all working me too hard this early in the message. I said the greater the struggle, the bigger the blessing. Okay, y'all didn't say, let me talk to this side. I said the greater the struggle, the bigger the blessing. Y'all didn't say, let me talk to the back row. Maybe the ushers can help me out. I said the greater the struggle, the bigger the blessing. And so your response is, any way you bless me, Lord, I will be satisfied. God doesn't always, did I say doesn't? Bad grammar, but it's good understanding. Huh? Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh, listen, listen. Prayer is effective when you understand that God may not always answer your prayer when you want him to. Ah, sometimes God will put you in a season of struggle to see how bad do you want it. Sometimes God will put you in a season where you're wandering, walking around in circles, talking to yourself, can't get no sleep at night, up in the middle of the night, pacing the floor, got to be at work at six, but you're up at three o'clock and can't get to sleep. God says, how bad? Do you really want it? And I wish I had about 20 folk in the building. You ain't got to say, man, just look at that man and I'll understand. Do I have about 20 folk in the building who can lift up their hands and say, I really want the Lord. I need the Lord more today than I did on yesterday. Woo. Got to have Jesus. For I just can't make it. <laughs> by my, by myself. Tried to, but I figured out I couldn't. Wanted to, but I realized I couldn't. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And so, and so, and so, Dr. H.B. Charles, pastor of the Shallow Metropolitan Baptist Church, Jacksonville, Florida, in his book, It Happens After Prayer, he writes, and I quote, God typically answers prayer that is offered from a person who is totally committed to him. <laughs> Watch this. Answered prayer is the overflow of a committed life. The life of the one praying is more important to God than the words of the prayer. Can I help y'all real quick? Watch this, watch this. He further submits that God accepted Nehemiah's prayer because God accepted Nehemiah. Yeah. 